Hi there, and welcome to another one take tutorial. This is going to be one that's a little bit more about networking than Campsys, but it's all joined in together. Um, I've been asked to explain about connecting uh, any remote devices such as another computer or uh, a tablet or a phone to Magic QPC. Um, it is simple if you know all the steps, but it's it's not just a case of configuring Magic Q. So we're gonna have to build the network. So if it's if networking is not your strong point, this is hopefully where I should be able to clear things up for you. The first thing we need to do, uh, and the first thing you need to know is this is not gonna work unless we're out of demo mode. So you need a piece of blue hardware, be it uh, a wing or a MIDI widget or um, one of the network nodes. Um, so just know that before we start, if you, you might start all the other stages. If you haven't got um, some blue hardware, something official, you're, and we're out of demo mode, we're not going to get any further. Anyway, with that being said, uh, let's get started. What I've got here connected um, to this computer is uh, two networks. One is my home network where I get the internet and things from. And the other is I've just set a little bit, a little router which I've set back to factory default, so we can configure it from scratch, and we'll go through all the stages. This is a little TP-Link router. Um, doesn't really matter which brand you've got; they'll all have roughly the same uh, language and menu structure. So don't be too worried if yours is a D-Link or whatever. You should be able to find the same kind of things we're doing, and it's really simple. We're not going to get involved in any any routing or anything like that. It's going to be nice and simple. All we're going to do is change the network. So it's given me, uh, if you see here where it says DHCP, that means that the router and it's on. That means the router has given me this IP address. All right, so the, the this little router has given me 192.168.0.100 with a subnet 255.255.255.0 and it's telling me that its own IP is 192.168.0.254 which is where I've gone to up here. Okay, uh, that's okay technically but we're going to be using ArtNet and, or highly likely be using ArtNet so let's set up this router to, be, to work with ArtNet. Now the way we're going to do that is go in here to network and LAN. So if you don't understand WAN and LAN, WAN is basically the world, the outside network, which is where this router is getting internet from. Uh, in this case, it's set to just look to what's ever connected. Uh, at the moment, I leave it connected because this is going to be used in, during shows, so I'm not going to be setting anything here. So LAN, this is LAN is our internal little network and our connections for us to be working in. So let's set this to um, a, a suitable IP range for ArtNet. Now I know that my MQ60 came with a default IP of 2.900.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
just understand that 192.168 that you use at home, 255, 255, 250, uh, ARCnet in the 2 range and the 10 range, 255.000. If you keep it at that, that's all you really need to know. So let's save that, reboot the network, uh, the, the little router. While that's re rebooting, I'm going to send that off to here, to the side. So what are the next stages we have to do? Well, um, there's a few things I need to do. One, I'm going to have to take my phone and connect it to the Wi-Fi, which I'll be doing off screen so you don't see what I'm typing in and so on. But just once this has rebooted, we'll be getting onto that. So let's have a look here. No, we've still not got that IP yet. Um, and it's identifying, come on little machine. Let's 200.254. Let's type that in and see if it's right. Right, so we're ready here. So the next thing, what we're going to do is go to the wireless, wireless settings, and wireless security. Come on. Right, so here's my Wi-Fi password it's going to be giving me. Don't you worry, you won't be seeing that in the future. It won't be the same IP. Right, so I'm now just in my phone getting uh, the Wi-Fi connected. So I'm finding this network, which is the name of, so in this case, uh, this is the name of the network which will appear in wireless settings. So 7761, seven, which is this one. So I'm just asking my phone to connect. And because I've already connected it, it's just getting all of the information from it, from it here. Okay, so we're now connected to the network, that network. Okay, so let's go back to Magic Q Remote. Okay, so this is, now I've got this computer connected to the network and I've got this phone connected to the network. Or, or I should do, except the phone's got the wrong IP. One second while I look at it and double check. Uh, back. Excellent. Yep, that's right. It is on the right network, so we'll see what happens. Yep, refresh the page. There we are. You see, it's got now found the local IP 292001. So this 101 has been given by that router. Right. The next thing we're going to do is give this computer, the physical computer, a fixed IP. Why? Because this is going to be the source. Um, this is where, think of Magic QPC as a server. Let's give it a fixed IP so it's always in the same place so any other bits of software or hardware such as this remote or such as an, an ArtNet node knows where it is and knows and it'll always be there. So the way we do this, we're just going to the properties and let's change this here. So we'll go 2.9.200 uh, one I said so if my console is one let's make this three for example like I said any numbers between one and two five four I'll do the subnet mask it's automatically giving me two five five zero 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 because it windows is nice and calculates it for you and again this is the same however you do it in Mac or in, in Linux same thing right the gateways and DNS's we don't need what's a gateway basically saying where's the internet come from on coming from. Well, we're not using the internet, especially on this closed network, so that you don't have to type anything. DNS is also related to the internet. Um, just to keep things simple, you don't need it. So with those two numbers, that's all you need. And if we go in here, that's now telling us that this compute or this network is fixed. So the, this Ethernet cable knows, has this computer at 2.9.203 and that's it. It's always going to be there. Right, so from now on, uh, all the work we need to do is here in Magic QPC, which I've got here set with uh, just 10 dimmer channels fixed, uh, patched in. And the rest of the things we're going to do, there's a few stages as in the setup pages. Now, first off, the obvious one, the network page. Right, the major thing you need to be looking at is there's... Uh, the, the, the answer is flashing away on the screen right now. They don't program Magic QPC to hide things and trick you. Okay, They give you all the information if you know where to look. And right now, there's, an, there's a little thing flashing away on the screen, which is down here. So it says, invalid network, invnet. Okay, 
and it says ArtNet conflict. It's sitting flashing away telling you there's something wrong and it happens to be with the network. Well, what is it? Well, like I say, if, if I go back and I'll open this again, okay, we have set this computer to have this IP of the of 29203. We now have to patch Magic QPC as a piece of software inside this computer to that network interface. Because if I open up this, I'll show you, I've got two interfaces. So this is my home network. So this, this piece of software at the moment doesn't know which of these it has to use. Now this is why I always say, especially on laptops that come with both a, a Wi-Fi card and a, a physical Ethernet card, disable your Wi-Fi and use Ethernet. One, it's faster and more stable, and two, Magic QPC or Capture or WYSIWYG or any media servers or anything else you're using isn't going to be confused trying to work out which interface it's going to use because depending on the computer and the operating system, um, specifically Windows with Wi-Fi, it, Windows will give Wi-Fi interfaces priority over an Ethernet one because it's most commonly used these days. So nine times out of ten, Magic QPC on a laptop will try sending ArtNet to and looking for information back from a Wi-Fi card when you're using a physical connection. So first thing to do when you start your laptop is disable your Wi-Fi, then open Magic Q and any other software you're using. That will solve you a lot of headaches in the future, just so you know. So like I say, we have to patch this to Magic QPC. Um, I'm using the word patch because we're all... Uh, lampy so just to give you an idea of what's going on so it's a, it's a virtual connection we have to now make there's a few ways to do this one you can remember the number and type it in the number being the 29203 or if you select it here, here's here with there's a blue selection box and come down here we'll open up a window showing the options of all the network interfaces in this computer so I've got my original one that's from the the with the internet which is what's currently selected so right now that's why we're not seeing anything here and this is another one I use for various other things. If I select here, right, so we're now on the right IP. Yes, the subnet's correct. Next, let's go down here a few boxes more. Ethernet Remote Control Protocol. Let's go in here and let's do CAMSYS Remote, TX and RX. Now, if you don't know, transmit is TX, RX is receive. So that's, that's bi-directional communication there. We're really close now. One last thing to do here in multi-console, Let's go to enable remote control and yes, and enable remote access and yes, and look instantly. This has just appeared here on the on the phone. So let's select that and we'll go into key. And if we watch anything I type here, so group has appeared here, one, enter and full. So now all, I, all heads are, are at full. If I hit clear, they will go down to zero. It's that simple. Um, that's all you need to know. Um, now you've got this connected, anything you like can be connected. So if you've gone through all the same stages here in the in in a console, for example, whereas the only other difference is, like I say, what we're doing here in a PC, this is a, a, a virtual patch, a virtual connection. In a console, it's physically manipulating the network interface and it's more direct, but same idea. And if we go in here into the multi console, if you've done that, you can do what I use, which is I don't actually like to use the phone app or the iPad or tablet app. Um, I prefer to take a touchscreen laptop and I'll use that as a remote. Why? Because I get this full control image as a remote. If we go in here to, you can't see it, it's off screen. Uh, there's an app in the Camtas Magic Q startup folder called Ca uh, Magic Q Remote Control. If you start that, uh, you get a little box that opens saying remote control another magic queue and you just click yes and in this case it's not going to work because it's not going to find because I'm already open here okay and and you'll just get a little box appear selected uh, needing to select it the only same thing applies I found that before you need you use the magic queue remote remote app you still need to go into the full Magic QPC, set the network interface, close it, and then go to remote apps. So it's telling Magic QPC the whole family of it, so all the apps, all the all the visualizers and so on, to use that network interface. Not just the IP, but the interface. Like I say, if I go in here and select this, it's going to be looking on the wrong interface. Okay. 
Uh, with that, that's all you really need to do. Um, I'm doing all this with, uh, let me just open it to prove it. It needs updating, that's why it says at risk, but I've got a full bit defender antivirus and um, firewall enabled. You know, there's no tricks. If you're having real problems and um, it's, say, a Windows PC that's purely for Magic QPC, yeah, go in and disable all the antiviruses and go in and disable all the, the firewalls and so on if you're not going, and it's never going online. And a lot of people use, will buy a laptop or an all-in-one PC just for that, yeah, and never connect it into that. There's no problems. Disable all that stuff and you're just guaranteed. But um, as you see, I've done all this um, without any bother. Um, like I say, that's all you really need to know. Um, anything other than that, we'll start looking at physical connections. Um, the only la other last trick you need to you can use, oops, let's go back out of there, is down here. So if we type in three dots and an IP address such as 2.9.200.254, that IP, if you remember, was the router. If we hit enter, we're pinging. Oh, why not? Yeah. 2.9.200.3, for example. Ah, uh, you see, I've broken it. Should be there. Uh, that could actually be the firewall. That's the one time the firewall's failing. But if you do that, the dot 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 uh, 2.9.200. Uh, 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 I put myself as two. Oh well, yeah, I think my firewall is blocking pings, but you can actually ping other um, computers and other devices on the network. So I'll, I'll for example, um, from my console, uh, generally once I've, you know, I won't do it every day, but say the first time I get to a site, um, I will ping my network nodes and ping my uh, media servers just to make sure they're up and running and physically connected. So I've not got a bad Ethernet connector somewhere or there's not a switch turned off somewhere and still ready to power up. Because nine times out of ten, these pings will show you um, physical problems, like I say, that you've brain farted and for forgot to connect something or forgot to turn something on more which is far more likely than you've got to reconfigure something. Nine times out of ten, it's something like that, especially on big shows where you've got lots of work to do. You'll just forget a silly thing. Um, and most of all, like I say, if, if you're checking physical problems, um, you're not undoing any other settings that are in these menus which you had up and running, especially if you've pre-programmed a show in, in a warehouse or at home. You don't want to start undoing settings that are working. Anyway, hope that's helped, and uh, as always, thanks for watching.